All right, so you wanna breed angelfish. I got a pretty cool method, something that's a little bit different. This is gonna be an all-encompassing video, walking you through day by day. Okay, so I have a spawn free swimming right now. I also have a spawn of these kois that are a little over a month old right now, doing really, really well. So this is how I do it. I like to use a spawning slate. So here you can see a real good example of what I'm working with, right? I get this from Menards, that's what's uh, local to me for a hardware store. I scrub them down super good with Dawn dish soap, if it's safe for ducks and little babies and crap like that. I think it's okay for fish, so I scrub it down. I just use really, really hot water, make sure there's no residue left over. You get the spawn on the slate. I then take these plastic containers, I just did a video on this. Some people use pickle jars, this has worked really well for me, it's more um, cost efficient. You don't have to dedicate a whole tank, right? Realistically, I could pin this container in this tank that it was spawned in without needing a whole separate tank and, and set up, right? Same exact water, it works really well for me. Okay, so I take the first two days, this current blue batch, I'll show you here in a second for my Philippine blues, were born on 614, on 616, they started hatching. So from 614, I put the slate into the container with Nice aeration on the back side of the stone, just making sure that there was good circulation that, that basically you're, you're keeping it oxygenated, right? Um, I put the egg submerged, put it into the tank, uh, up to here, right, it fills up, pull it back out, and then I treat it with usually two milliliters of hydrogen peroxide. That's your antifungal agent with good circulation, and I will treat with hydrogen peroxide every morning and every evening. Once they start to hatch, I take my slate without roughing them up. Typically, you'll be able to see them on the slate when they start wiggling. I pull my slate out of the container, switch up containers. This one I just submerge. All the water filters through the sponge. You get no tank debris, nothing like that. Nice clean water on the inside. And then I just put it into here with a real light bubble. I will then give it roughly eight to 12 hours. So if I find them wiggling in the morning, that evening I'll take a basically some sort of squirty device, right? A pipette. I use these syringes. I have two different sizes that work really well for me. Perks of having a spouse that's a nurse, I guess, right? <laughs> but I then spray them all off of this because you'll get some white ones, ones that aren't so good. The peroxide will keep them from fungusing up. But once we get them and they hatch, we stop using peroxide and we just go straight tank water, right? Filter through this sponge. Um, I spray them off. I, I be pretty ginger about it and I use a birdie bright flashlight to see if I'm getting all the eggs off But I get all the eggs off once they're on the bottom You can remove the slate wash the slate put it back in the tank or just store it right. I just store them They then sit into this container until they're free swimming. I did this video right now mine just started free swimming today on 621 again, they're born on the 14th so roughly seven days later, right? I run my tank about 81 to 82 degrees. I will show you the babies real quick and then we'll go from what I do next. Okay, so this might be a little overboard for some, but I just wanted to really take the time to show you what free swimming looks like because when I initially started this, I had a hard time knowing what free swimming was. You'll get days where they still have the, uh, the egg sac like stuck to their bellies. It seems like they're starting to kind of free swim. They're fluttering around. This right here is what free swimming looks like. Like when it happens, you're gonna be like, oh my gosh, like this is for sure it. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. This is free swimming. I just wanted to take 30 seconds so that we have a great example. This is what free swimming looks like. This is what you're waiting for. Okay, so on to the next step. This is what I'll do next. Okay, so day seven. We got free swimmers. They're down here in our container. We are about to this one. Take one of these little DIY hatchers. They're air powered, right? It's very similar to Dean's thing, except for I didn't want to set up a whole individual tank. Now I can take this, place in any one of my 10 gallons, and then use this, pretty much raise those angelfish up to that roughly 30 day mark before we throw it in a 20 gallon or a bigger tank, right? So we're about to throw them into the DIY hatcher from here, and I'll just do that on video for, for grins. All right, if there's any interest in, in how I built that, that hatch or just let me know. So real quick, I have it set up in this 10 gallon, roughly tank temperature the exact same, like I said, 81 to 82 degrees. And we are going to throw all these swimmers, hopefully not all the snails here, 
all these swimmers into here where we can target feed, feed them the baby brine, and make sure we can chuck in each individual one, pull them out as they die. Um, it seems like there's a pretty good attrition rate when it comes to freshwater normal fish. So we'll just pour these in here. And I'm going to give it a second just to drain. I'm actually going to load up a base here because in my experience, every once in a while, you will get, I guess this, I call it a base here, this syringe. I'm going to load up this knickknack just in case we get some sticking to the plastic so that way I can squirt them out of there without having to wait. So we're just going to pour them in. Oh yeah, look at the babies. There is a ton. This is a good spawn. Much bigger than my koi spawn was. Oh my gosh, this thing's too damn big. And there's a mess of them. Okay, so that turned into a little bit of a fiasco with getting them out of the container. However, this is the biggest spawn I've ever had. So this is pretty wild. This is a good one. These are my Philippine Blues. This is the end state. So if you do end up making one of these little containers, have this just white, you can't see them on black. But from here, basically what we can do now, seeing that this is small, we can target feed them brine shrimp. So now from here on out, I'll feed them three times a day, all the way up until roughly day 20, day 21, at which point I just take this container, I turn it upside down and I dump it into the 10 gallon tank here and then start feeding them from here. Roughly day 30 to day 40, maybe I'd say probably day 35, day 40, I then put them into a 20 gallon and we start raising them from here, right? Um, I think I'll be able to get another two to three weeks out of these guys. I'll do another cull and then they will go down to the bottom to the 90 gallon where I will start selling them and then pulling out my future breeders. So thank you all for your time. I hope this was a little bit of insight. Um, everybody has their own way. This is the way that works really well for me. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.